Greetings. Welcome back to my channel, Ham Radio Test and Review. Today, I'm going to be setting up my JPC-12 POTA antenna, which I ordered from Amazon. I've uh, set it up on a previous um, video for you so you can see uh, how it works. But today, I bought a couple of um, different accessories for it. One of them I got from uh, LA Express, and it's the JPC-12 radial plate. Now, normally, the antenna comes with a 10-conductor um, ribbon wire that you separate the wires, and they're all connected via a ring connector, and then it uh, then connects to the uh, ground spike and the bottom of the uh, antenna. And then you just pull out the uh, radials and you separate them and, and put them all, all around uh, about as evenly spaced as you possibly can. But it's a bit of a mess because having 10 small wires trying to keep them separated, it just becomes a, a, an absolute mess when you try to take it apart and do it all over again the next day. So what I'm trying here is I bought this. This is a um, aluminum anodized plate and it has these screws and by the way i scratched the bottom up a little bit just uh, make sure that i get a good electrical connection uh, it's been anodized and it has been anodized and this is this white part is an actually anodization it's not uh it's not a, a metal i don't know how it shows up on the video but it's not metal and so i wanted to make sure that uh, when i put it on my ground spike and on the bottom of the um, connector that uh, it gets a good electrical connection. Now each one of these wing nuts loosens and then of course you connect a uh, ground radial to it and then tighten it. What I've done is there's eight of these and I have created eight of these five meter radial ground radials and I put the little spade connectors on the end and, and put the, some heat shrink tubing on them. And uh, I will be putting these out uh, along with the along with the, uh, the, the new plate. And um, these are 22 gauge wire radials. Now the other thing that I also purchased, this is the eight foot and whip antenna that uh, comes with the JPC-12 antenna. But what I did was, is I purchased a 17-foot whip, and you'll see me put that out. All right, so let's go out into my backyard where I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna start off this morning on 10 meters, and I will uh, be setting this up. I'm not going to bore you with the entire setup, but I will show you uh, little bits and pieces as we go along. So I've put the ground spike in. Now I'm going to put this plate onto the ground spike and then screw the uh, connector onto the ground plate. Just like that. And now I'm going to connect my radials up to it. So this is my first time doing this and you'll be seeing me do it. Okay, as you can see, I've got all my eight ground rods uh, put out. It might actually take me a little longer to do uh, th this way than it did from the stock um, ground radials that come with it. And it might even take me a little longer to um, bring pick them all back up. But it's a lot more organized and a lot less hassle and a, a lot less chance of things getting tangled up and taking me a lot longer. So, next thing I'm going to do is put the 17-foot uh, whip antenna on the mount. Now, I got this 17-foot whip directly from AliExpress as well. Of course, it's all metric. It's, uh, it's M10. And 
everything screws in properly, but now I need to start expanding it. I'll be right back. All right. Because it's so long, I have to make sure every section is pulled out before I pull the next section out. Because it's so long, I may not be tall enough if I don't get them pulled out while they're down here near me. Okay, that's it. Now I'll go get my coax and my antenna analyzer and we'll start figuring stuff out. And as you can see, this is the final product way up there. Very good. I'm going to go get my coax. So the best I've been able to do with this antenna is uh, 1.48, just about in the center of the band. Uh, 28.7. Well, that's not really the center. But uh, it's less than 1.5 all the way across. So let me try a couple more experiments and I'll get back see what I can do. So I had every intention of tuning this antenna at 10 meters and going in and showing you how well this antenna works at 10 meters. And the problem was is I got it tuned and the band was shut down completely. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just hop up to 15 meters. Well, guess what? The 15 meter band, there was nobody on it. I live in a fairly small town, and I guess 15-meter band just is not that popular. So what did I do? I jumped up to the 20-meter band. And uh, I did record um, one very long QSO that I had. It was about 45 minutes long. I recorded about five or seven minutes of it. And I will uh, put it at the end of this video. So let me get back to you in a second here. And... Um, I'll give you my final thoughts on all the pieces. So how did the, per the antenna perform today? Well, on 10 meters, I can't tell. The, the band was shut down completely. There was nobody on and there was nothing to be heard. The 15 meter band, same thing, but I think in this particular case, uh, the I've never been on the 15 meter band up here before. There probably isn't much action anyway up, uh, up on the 15 meter band. So. Uh, once I hit the 20 meter band, it was busy and it was fairly quiet in the beginning, even though the noise floor uh, kept going up and up and up during the afternoon. And so I made quite a few QSOs, and, uh, uh, but uh, I didn't record uh, most of them. So uh, I, I did record one very, uh, very nice one with a guy up in Oregon. Uh, I'm in Prescott, Arizona, if you uh, didn't know. And um, the I was actually getting out all the way to California, which is new for me. Uh, I can usually get up north, northeast uh, pretty well, uh, and maybe a little northwest, but getting out due west and maybe even a little south uh, is really tough uh, for me because I have some hills between here and there. So I have to, um, the, the signal has to uh, angle up and over the hill and then bounce off the ionosphere somewhere. But uh, I did a lot of California talking today, which was really great. This antenna performs tremendously. It's a wonderful antenna. It's the JPC-12, and it's a really great antenna for POTA. I've been using it as a, uh, as a, ba a base station antenna here in my house because I'm moving soon, and I'm not going to put up an antenna just to take it down in a month or two. So what did I think of the JPC-12 um, radial plate. Well, it worked very well. I actually created um, eight five-meter radials, so that gives me a counterpoise of about 40 meters, and it worked wonderful um, on the 20-meter band, and uh, I did some a uh, little bit of work on the 40 meter band. It worked really great uh, there as well. I think that having the uh, ground radials uh, longer and uh, more spread out uh, evenly than I normally do because of 
the way the stock uh, uh, ground radials work with this antenna. Um, I think that helped me uh, get all the way out to California. I think that was a big thing. Um, so I like this plate. It takes longer to set up than the, uh, than the stock ground radials. I intend to buy uh, another set of stock ground radials, uh, and I'm going to use them uh, under different circumstances. When I don't have the time uh, and I need to set something up quickly, I'll just use uh, a set of stock uh, radials. Otherwise, I intend to uh, use this plate and, uh, and use the, uh, the little wire radials that I uh, made. And um, I will take the time uh, and effort to uh, set them up properly because it worked really, really well. The last thing I'm going to say is, is that uh, the 17-foot whip antenna, um, I was able to get it tuned at 10 meter. Um, it seemed to be, it seemed to work just fine, except for the fact that there was nobody on the band. I think the band was shut down. It was closed. There was nobody on there. And same thing with the 15 meter. I was able to tune it to 15. Um, and then I uh, tuned it for 20 and it just fantastic. Actually with this whip antenna, I think that it performed better than the standard POTA antenna with a coil and an eight foot whip. So I replaced the coil uh, and the eight foot whip with the 17 foot whip and then tuned it. Uh, I had to tune it, probably take a few feet uh, down out of it, but still um, I, I was able to tune it up real nice. I don't have, didn't have to use the uh, automatic uh, antenna tuner on my rig and uh, it just got out and, I, and even more so and even better it really received a lot better. So um, I highly recommend if you get one of those JPC 12s that you get one of these 17 foot whips and you play around with it uh, by replacing the coil and the eight foot whip uh, using this uh, antenna. So uh, that gives you some ideas um, and I think you might uh, enjoy uh, how well this thing really works. So those are my thoughts on this. I highly recommend all these pieces. They're all available on uh, AliExpress and uh, just be prepared if you're going to order anything from AliExpress. Sometimes it takes forever. Other times it doesn't. I've had things come in uh, much less than two weeks and I've had other things take uh, over a month. I've had things stuck in customs. Uh, it's a little frustrating, but their prices are good and uh, quality is, is okay. Um, when I want to buy something that I um, think that should be uh, 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 a better quality, I usually go out to Amazon and take a look out there first and see if it uh, is a decent price. If a decent price, I'll just buy it from Amazon, get it in a few days and, and be done with it. But uh, things like this, you know, $10, $12, yeah, it's okay. If it gets lost, stolen, whatever, I'll get a refund eventually in a month or two, and then I'll just order another one and it'll come. Uh, the wire, I paid, uh, I think, less than $4 for uh, two rolls of 22-gauge, um, uh, very soft uh, and flexible silicon wire. Um, so each roll was 50 meters, so I have 100 meters. Next thing I'm going to do with that uh, wire is I'm going to uh, put up a dipole antenna and uh, play around with that. And uh, so I have plenty of wire to deal with. I have bought all the little carabiner clips um, that... Um, all the big YouTube uh, guys uh, use and, and all their antenna stuff. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, my name is Dave and I live in Prescott, Arizona. My call sign is November 8 Delta Alpha Victor. And I'm saying 73s and so long. For about 10 years. And so uh, on the desert, <clears throat> excuse me, on the desert uh, quite a bit. And then I uh, got down uh, the clients in Lake Havasu, Bullhead City, Laughlin, and down that way, Needles. Uh, boy, oh boy, that was a hell of a place to be when it was hot. I can remember it being uh, over 100 degrees at 2 in the morning in, in Needles. <laughs> that was being Needles, I think. And then I uh, got to look down into uh, to, uh, the Barstow and uh, all the way down into... Uh, and uh, Visalia, and then uh, uh, all the way back up.
up uh, uh, Fresno, and then um, finally made it up here uh, uh, to a, uh, a station in Bill they uh, do a, did an upgrade on a, a broadcast station up here in Mount Shasta. And uh, so that, uh, but I did enjoy my stay there in, uh, in Kingman, over. Yeah, Roger, Roger. I've been uh, just went to Kingman uh, maybe about a month, month and a half ago for the first time. And uh, while I was up there, we also went to uh, Oatman. I don't know if you've been to Oatman. That's a, kind of like a little uh, ghost town, mining town kind of thing. That's more of a tourist trap now. And uh, I think they're known for their uh, wild donkeys that roam the streets uh, about 24-7 uh, trying to get a, a meal off of some... Uh, some tourists and stuff like that. Uh, back to you. Yeah, right to that. And boy, that was a, a kind of a roller coaster there. You dipped down, came back up loud. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Oakman, I had a, um, a station on Oakman Mountain there, and that was a, that was really something to get up that thing. You know, the Ford Proving Ground down there used that to test their, their four-wheel drives, and uh, it, uh, it was uh, probably the 